All right, great. Well, there we go. Yeah. So thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, I think this is our last uh, seminar of the year. So um, super excited to have you here and uh, super excited to welcome Alex. So Alex de Cicada is the data science outreach lead at BIDS, which is Berkeley Institute for Data Science. He works on open source algorithms for processing several kinds of images. And he received his PhD in Brazil, applying image processing to tackle different challenges in material science and geochronology. And additionally, he is the maintainer, a maintainer of Scikit Image and also an open source and free software enthusiast and has given so many tutorials and contributed to several projects and events in Latin America, Europe, and Oceania. So um, happy to have you here, Alex, and uh, for you to share you know, your knowledge with us about Scikit Image. So um, without further ado, please take it away. Hey, hey everyone. Thank you, Monica. Thanks, Matt, for the invitation. Thanks, Adam. So, uh, you know, when you wake up and you feel like, oh, I'm going to do a great tutorial today for the Compile Skills Seminar, right? There's someone else waking up and saying, oh, I'm going to have a lovely day chopping wood and uh, grinding trees and stuff. So, if you hear something in the background, I'm sorry, I apologize. I don't have any control about that. But the fact is, like someone else is working in the background, and um, let's let's try to do things in here, right? Um, please let me share my screen. First of all, now um, for this tutorial, I based myself in a tutorial that we have in second image and um, it's mostly on 3d images you can go to this address that i'm sure that matt is going to is going to put somewhere um and uh, it will be basically this the uh jupyter notebook that we have in here and there are some instructions in here like it's not that um on the uh, on the readme there are some instructions for you to go through to see if your PC has the uh, the packages you need, and if not, how you can use, for instance, Conda or Anaconda or something else for you to go through the tutorial at your own leisure. Okay, so when you can, like, if you're using Git, you can use Git, download the coding here, like using SSH or HTTPS. Or if you don't want to, you can download the zip file and put it somewhere in your PC, right? So in my PC, it's living in here, like events 2022 CCB second image 3 t tutorial. And um, if you see like, the uh, the contents are all there, and we're interested in this CCB underscore second image. Okay, so let me start a Jupyter notebook. And then it says no module name notebook, of course, because I need to activate the uh, CCB, so that like image environment. Okay, so environments in Python are a very nice idea, and if you don't know how to use them, uh, please check it out. So if I I I said something here about how you use, like if you're using Conda, like how you create an environment where that will be um, called CCB underscore second image in your PC. So if you type in your terminal, in your PowerShell, in your Windows subsystem for Linux, something like that, uh, Conda activates CCB second image, you can use the packages we use today, all right? So now uh, I have this nice indicator in here that says we're there in CCB underscore second image. And then uh, Alex, we'll sorry, a quick interruption. It, I think it might be better if you zoomed in like one or two times on the terminal just to make it a little easier to see. How about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Conda activate CCB second image. It's here, CCB underscore second image, right? So, we can go um, and execute Jupyter Notebook again. And then since the packages are already there, let me give some zooms in here as well. Um, the packages are already there, and now we have Jupyter Notebooks, and then you can click on it and open CCB underscore second image as a Jupyter Notebook in your PC. Okay, so 
uh, after preparing your BC, after going through all the ritual, like Conda or Pip, you name it. Let's talk about Psychic Image. Um, Psychic Image is a package, a set of um, algorithms based on NumPy and SciPy and the uh, scientific Python ecosystem. Um, this package, like second image, is um, peer reviewed. We have our maintainers there reviewing you. We, you can contribute uh, Python code as well. You can uh, use this package as your uh, as you wish because of the uh, BSD license. And we have um, lots of bleeding edge algorithms, lots of uh, traditional algorithms as well. And you as a biologist or someone that's like uh, interested in biology, you can use it for 3D image analysis or, or something like that, okay? So in this tutorial specific one, I will go through a lot of stuff. Uh, please don't uh, please don't feel the need that like, it's a, uh, of course, it's a lot of stuff. Like you won't get it like in at the first time. So, I will get a nice um, a nice data set of steps and uh, we will pre-process it, like filter the data, binarize segmented data, and then count measure attributes, objects, regions in this data, and then visualize it in a nice way, right? So again, what is like an image? We just said that it's like uh, an, a uh, collection of circuit, uh, of image processing algorithms like that integrates well with sci the SciPy ecosystem. So scikit, uh, scikit-learn, NumPy, Matplotlib, SciPy, uh, NetworkX, and so on and so forth. Right. So if you install the packages as we give as we gave in the README, you can run the uh, check setup in here, like shift enter, and then it will say hey, I have all these packages in here because of the check marks, right? So we're good to go. And to start, we can import the basic scientific Python ecosystem that I'm calling in here. Uh, the basic will be NumPy, Matplotlib, and SciPy. So I think I'm, I'm writing ecosystem in here wrong because the Portuguese, the Portuguese uh, word has two S's. So don't, worry, don't mind me on that. So let's use import numpy as np to import the numpy package. From matplotlib, we are interested in the uh, plot, the plot, um, the plot tools they have in there. So we are, we are importing pyplot as pot. So every time we're, we're calling pot, we're having pyplot in the way. And from scipy, we're importing nd image, which is the uh, the uh, the tools that we have for no uh like n dimensional images in SciPy, right? And here we have matplotlib in line, which is a magic that will show the plots inside this notebook. Okay, so shift enter. So we don't have any errors in here, so we're fine. I like monospace fonts in my matplotlib figures, so you can say pot.rc parameters and then font.family equals monospace but this is on me. And then like three, uh, three dimensional image processing. So in second image, images are represented as NumPy arrays, okay? So if you get a grayscale, uh, a grayscale image, so it will be consisted as rows and columns in your, in your applications. So not X and Y as you see somewhere else, and um, if you have a 3D image, um, it kind of likely will have a channel, cha uh, a channel, channel that will have uh, color information on that image. So, if you can, um, if you have a volume like a 3D volume that has color information, like most of the times it will have the plane, plane in the, the the first coordinate, and then row the second coordinate, and then column the third coordinate. Right. So just summarizing it here, we have 2D grayscale images. You have row and column, 2D multi-channel or like um, 2D, uh, 2D like colored, like 2D, uh, 2D RGB images or something like row, column, channel, 
and then 3D grayscale images will be a plain and row column, and 3D multi-channel will be plain, row, column, and channel, right? All right, so let's say we are interested in a 3D grayscale image. Like it doesn't have any color, but it has the planes in there. So some 3D images will be like built with equal res resolution. So you have 30 planes, 30 rows, 30 columns. However, in, like, in real life, you won't see that much of this. Like, let's say when you're like uh, photographing slices in like approximating a 3D structure in the microscope, for instance, you will have like mostly, uh, mostly most likely you have the planes like, a, like different than the rows and columns. You can have rows different than columns and so on. And we have an example of such data, the cells I was talking, of, uh, I was talking about in this. All right. So let's start with scikit-image.io. So we have lots of utilities in there to read and to write images in several formats. So IO stands here for input and output. So we're interested in here in IM read, which will read an image to an empire array. I am save, which will write an image to this. And then you have I read underscore collection that will read multiple images that are like, they kind of look the same or they have the same pattern, like a lots of PNGs, lots of JPEGs or something like that. Okay, so first of all, let's import this submodule. So from second image import IO and you have uh, in that, in these data, we have let's go. Let's go back to the uh, to the, uh, the the repository. So we have the folder data, and inside we have cells. Okay. So this is the image we're working on today. Um, so I will call it cells. I will put it this in a variable named cells, and then we can put io.imread. And then you use like a string to say where this uh, where this image is coming from. So io dot um, goes to goes to cells, right? The content of that goes to the cells variable. And uh, no errors, we're fine. So first, let's shape let's check the the shape of this image. Let's check the data type of this image, and let's check the range of the data in this image, right? So cells.shape will give you will give us the shape. Cells.d type will give us the data type, and cells.min the minimum, and max will be will get the maximum of that, right? So you see that cells has sixty planes, uh, two fifty six rows, and two fifty six columns. It has a float uh, float sixty four uh, data type, and uh, so uh, um, a floating floating um, dot points, let's go it that way. So a flow image that goes from zero and uh, from zero to one, okay? So 60, uh, 60 planes, let's try visualizing these using second image.io.imshow. And then I, I wisely put a try accepting here because you see that this is not right because it will say, this is an invalid shape. Why? Because I get image.io.im show will only work with 2D images. Okay. So if we're showing 2D images like grayscale, RGB 2D images, we're good. But for 3D images like this, we will need something extra. And um, I didn't put it here to not like to not get too much dirt and too much code around, but you have in the uh, repository supplementary code.py that has all the uh, the tips and tricks that I'm using here, like to see the 3D images and to do something else, right? So I am importing it supplementary code as sc. So to call the uh, to call the functions that are there, we say sc dot something as we're doing with numpy, matplotlib, and scikit image, right? So uh, pot dot subplots. Here I'm I'm setting a one one row and three columns, uh, a figure size of sixteen by four, and then there 
in, uh, in supplementary code, you have this function that's called show plane and the plane 32 and then from uh, and then row 128 and then column 128, right? So now you see what we want with this 3D tutorial. We want to check these planes and extract these um, these cells that are in this um, in this data, right? So this is row 128 and this is column 120, 128 for just to have an idea uh, of what's happening there, okay? So you can see a three-dimensional image as a series of two-dimensional two uh, slices. And we have there a uh, the supplementary code, this function that's called Slice Explorer. So I can put cells in there. And then this function will have a slider for you to check where you are in your data and um, how, um, how far it can go in your data, how these cells are presented in there, in these planes, okay? Um, and we have an idea on how this image will behave. So plane, uh, plane 51, 52, these this, this cells will end. And um, they will start after plane, uh, let's say, 1920, right? So we have a display function there as well in supplementary code that can display 30 planes of this provided image, right? So every other plane is displayed by default, but you can check there in supplementary code what we did for this function. And uh, you can see how the, uh, the cells uh, appear and progress in this data set, right? So let's go to scikit-image.exposure right now. So we can evaluate and change exposure values, gamma, histogram, uh, equalization, correction. You can do it all using these tools, okay? So let's import it first from, from second image import exposure. And then we can use exposure dot the functions that are there. And um, let's, let's set up a gamma value low of 0 0.5 and then gamma value high of 1.5 and use adjust gamma to see the behavior that we have in these, in these images, okay? So I'm here doing a very intricate subplot for these. And then here we are playing with the histogram of this image to see how how they how it behaves when we give gamma per, uh, when we increase the gamma of these of these pictures, right? So you see that gamma low will give us a lighter image, and gamma high will give us a darker darker image, and the behavior of the histogram of the uh, original image. And a gamma, a gamma low, you see that it, uh, it spreads a little bit more and the gamma high will uh, shrink a little bit, right? So we can use the uh, histogram, histogram equalization as well. And uh, it will improve the contrast in this image, like uh, distributing the, uh, the pixel int intensities. And we can see these through the histogram, right? So cells will be, um, we can use exposure.equalizeHist for the cells in here. And then like, this all is just a lot of uh, histograms that we're setting here to see the behavior of what we did as we did before. So this is the histogram equalization for the cells. And you see that it's kind of destructive, right? Um, so the uh, the uh, the CDF the cumulative, uh, the cumulative distribution function is here, and you see that's very equalized when we use histogram equalization, right? So plane thirty, you see like plane seventeen and plane thirty nine, things are nicer, right? But we have lots of noise in here, so um, we can use also. We can use rescue intensity here 
to rescale these images and trying to get read of um, of a little, uh, a little bit of this noise that we added in here. So we can use like um, we can use the uh, the darkest and brightest uh, zero point five percent of the image and like clip them away, take them from the image, and see these with Slice Explorer. And now you're seeing that the uh, the cells image, the original one, is kind of cleaner in that way. Okay. So choosing for for from these three, so exposure. Okay, so choosing from these three, the uh, adjust gamma, and then the uh, histogram equalization, and only clipping the. Uh, the highest and lowest values of this image. I'm going to go with this one because the cells are very uh, are nicely are nicely presented in here, and um, we took a lot of the noise, so we can just say let's say cells rescaled is equal to cells clipped, and shift enter, and we're going with that right now. So now. For functions for edge detection in second image, we can use first um, we can use them in second image dot filters, and then there we have filters for shooting, we have filters for edge finding, we have ridge filters, we have inverse filtering, we have directional filters, we have uh, sharpening, we have them all uh, blurring filters. So. Um, First of all, we again import from second, second image import filters, and then let's use a Sobo filter to um, to try to determine the uh, the uh, edges of these cells. Okay, um, and then we can uh, for every image in cells rescaled, right? So we're doing this 2D in 2D here. We'll use filters dot Sobo in these images, right? And then you can see the results in here, where we have a very nice uh, edge detected for most of the things. And I don't think we want this in here. Like this region doesn't look very uh, cell-like, but that's okay. We'll take care of that later. Um, so let's see how Sobo is. Uh, is taking care of the rows and the columns in here because we we have 3D Sobo and second image as well. So 3D Sobo and 2D Sobo, you see that 2D Sobo is kind of better for some of the regions and we can use it to go with the, um, to, to proceed with these, these cells, right? So, Second image dot transform. We can we have several transforms and we have several warping functions in there. So here we can use it importing from second image import transform, and let's downsample uh, downsample this image first. Let's take um, every other every other four pixels and make a uh, make an uh, make an image with it. So we have an eight by eight pixels in here, let's say, um, and now we're getting four of these and shaping these into one pixel only, right? According to the means of the regions that we're working here. Okay, so downscale local mean will do that. And um, according to the, uh, the spacing that we have from the microscope, according to this image, we can use this to let me put this here, shift enter. We can use this to have a better, uh, a better filter of this image, right? So filters.caution first, we can use a base sigma and divide by the spacing that the microscope gave us. And uh, we can use the uh, Gaussian filter here to, to process this. Um, and then you see that we have a very blurry image here, but the cells are well defined, and we don't have that. Uh, we don't have that much um, noise in the background, right? Um, let's try the. Um, we have the medium filter as well, and uh, you can check it. 
uh, if you'd like, but it doesn't support three-dimensional images and uh, it needs to be applied in 2D as we did with Sobo. So let's now import util, so the utilities that we have in second image, and um, let's transform this as uh, from float to a binary image, or I'm sorry, to a to an integer integer image in here because we don't we don't need that that much information to represent this right now, and uh, we can uh, we can have the uh, again we are applying the median filters that I was talking about in, uh, before. So for every every image in the plane, we're applying filters.median and we have these as a result, right? Uh, the, image are, the images are clearer. We don't lose that much of the cells as we did before, but um, we still have a little bit of noise in here. Um, now let's proceed with these and try to do some denoise using the functions that we have in second image dot restoration. So first let's import second image dot restoration and then use the function denoise bilateral in here. And um, the uh, bilateral denoising is very powerful. It will kind of blur the image a little bit but it will have a very nice result for us to analyze later, right? So let's compare all the, the options we had before. So rescaled, Gaussian, bilateral, median, and see which one is best. So we have median here. I think it's best because the, uh, if we compare with the original, like Gaussian loses a lot, of the information of the um, of the cells, it gets kind of blurry. Uh, bilateral, I think though, uh, I think so too. It, it gets kind of blurry, so it it will it won't be as nice as median is giving us here. We have at least uh, a little bit of noise, but it will be the the images sharper than these two that we're having here, like gosh and bi bilateral. Okay, so let's continue with this. And every time that I refer to cells denoise right now, I'm saying cells median, okay? So um, now that we uh, open the image, we, we cleaned the image, we take a little bit of noise, let's try to threshold the, um, the, the cells that we have there. So we have the cells very well delimited compared to the background. And here I will try uh, threshold Li, threshold Otsu. And um, let's see which one is better for these images, right? So you have threshold uh, Li's threshold in here for the 30, uh, for the uh, plane number 32. And threshold Li, you see it's a, uh, a little bit on the left in here and threshold of Su is a little bit on the right. So um, Otsu will not get a lot. Um, we'll lose a lot in the, uh, in, the uh, in the inner of the cells compared to Li. So let's go with Li because we won't need to, we won't need to process that much the images later. And now we have that all the images here are binary. So we can work in this plane and see how the, uh, how the cells are going up and down in binary images, right? So let's, let's um, use morphology right now to improve on these, on these regions, for instance. We have a little bit of noise, we have, a little bit of speckle in there. We can use second image dot morphology. So from second image import morphology, and we can generate a ball with morphology dot ball. So let's generate a ball of radius five, and let's generate a cube of width five as well, and check um, 
and check how's the effect of these in the uh, in the images we got. So let's say we have a ball radius of, of uh, with radius of three, and then let's use the uh, the operations of closing, dilation, erosion, and opening in these images and check binary closing, the uh, dilation, erosion, opening in the binary images we got. And then we can see the, uh, the effects we have on the images, on the input images. So these are the, um, the, um, the input images we had filtered so far. And then we're using dilation, closing and opening, and you can see the difference we have. And on the binary ones, when we use erosions, we have these dilation, closing, and opening. We have these images. So let's combine closing and opening and remove a little bit of the noise we had. So we use threshold Lee, and then we use closing and opening, and then we take all these speckle like according to a ratio, uh, according to a radius that we pass. So if we're passing like radius one, you see that we take a little, uh, we take a lot of the noise, but not all noise. But we, if we pass um, a radius equal to, equals three, it will take all noise, but regions will start like getting together in here. So we have to take a little bit care with that. So um, let's try removing the small holes that we have in there before doing anything else uh, in this binary image. And then let's see the effects that we have with that. Um, and then we can see that the result's kind of nice. So it takes away most of the noise and it doesn't, uh, and it doesn't screw up the image that badly. Um, and then we can remove also small objects after we remove the holes inside. So we have an even better result compared to the other ones that we had so far. Um, and let's go with these and start measuring the image, the, the regions that we have in this image. So for that, we can use second image dot measure, and then we have label that will identify the, the regions we have in this image using unique integers. So for instance, now we had binaries. So like the first region it will find, it will say, hey, this is number one. The second region will be number two, number three, and so on. And then we can use region props in this labeled image to see the properties of each region that we had, okay? So there are a lot of functions in here as well. I'm talking about these. Uh, you can check these if you'd like. And um, use these functions from second image import measure, and then the functions are there. So first of all, let's grab the, the label of these cells, and then let's use slice explorer to see what's happening with these labels, okay? So you see that these, uh, the functions, the, um, the, the cells are kind of labeled properly, but some of them are still joined because they were too close when we were binarizing them or something, right? Um, so for instance, when rescale here, and we, you can see that these two are, uh, are joined together, okay? So, to, uh, to get a better result in that, we can use watershed segmentation that will distinguish touching objects and will mark these touching objects according to, according to local minima and say, hey, these two are supposed to be separated, okay? So first, we'll get the distance between the center of the region and all the regions that we have there. So, you see that, for instance, um, the distance here, it goes, when it goes to the borders, it starts to get uh, smaller. And Watershed knows that these regions, for instance, are not supposed to be together because the, the, 
the minimum or is too the it's too large in here. Okay. So let's extract some features using second image feature. And to use the uh, segmentation in here, the segmentation I just talked to, uh, I just talked about the watershed that supports segmentation, right? So again, let's let's uh, label the uh, the image. The let's uh, get the peaks of this image according to the distance that we just calculated, and let's measure the um, let's put some markers in that according to the labels, okay? And then we use these markers to for the watershed for, uh, for what I was talking about. And then you can see that we have some, some regions here that are not nicely uh, gotten by the watershed, but we can deal with that later. Um, and then, um, Let's show the problems that we're having so far. For instance, here you're seeing that these are all, uh, these are still glued, and these cells are still glued. So we can see in this that these fun these labels are over segmented, as we say. So it's it feels like for the algorithm, it sees this as a region, the red region in here, and the gray region. As region so when you count it will give you two cells in here we don't want that so let's improve the markers that the watershed is using here so the markers that we did so far they are uh, you can see them here and you're seeing that this is marking four four points for these for this cell we don't want that we want this to be as one cell only this one we want these to be one cell only as well, and so on. Like this one, you see this, this plane, and this plane, and you're seeing that this will be counted twice. So let's improve these blurring and using a larger foot footprint on on the uh, on the peak local max function. So you see that the that first we had several peaks in here. And with these improved blurred version, we have one peak only. So these won't be counted as one more, uh, more than one cell in our case. So using these, the labels and the, um, the labels and the, um, uh, the features that we got here to generate only one, on, only one peak, we can, we can have a nice uh, a nice sample of these the cells that we have we had there uh, despite losing a little bit of the cells that we have in the back right so let's relabel these um, because the labels are no longer sequential because we uh, we erased some random labels in in here are like uh, the three, the label number eight, the label number 10, 14. So these are now at kind of random here. So we can use relabel sequential and uh, these cells will be relabeled for zero, one, two, three, up to eight. Okay. So we can use region props. And when we use region props in here, you can see that uh, these properties will be supported because this is a 3D, this is a 3D image. These are in, unsupported because, uh, because this is a 3D image. This is not uh, implemented for 3D images yet, but we can do a lot of things and we can check, for instance, the, uh, the area for these measured major regions in pixels. So, these all have more than 40,000 40, pixels. Um, and we can use this info, uh, this info for, to check the volume statistics and the mean and the standard deviation and everything that we have for all these cells that we managed to, to separate. So the total of pixels, the minimum, the maximum, and the mean, 
and the standard deviation of these of these cells, right? So after a lot of work and a lot of experimentation, we can um, we can plot and visualize these as a 3D structure or something nicer to see. And in this supplementary code, we have a function that's called plot 3D surface, and you can see you can pass it like the number of the region you want. And you can see this large structure in there um, representing one cell. But when you use ITK and ITK widgets, you have something more interesting to see. So let's import ITK. And from ITK widgets here, we're importing view. And first, when since we're using NumPy arrays, NumPy structure, we need to transform these to an image that ITK needs to see. And we'll use the function itk.getImageFromArray and the cells that we relabeled uh, just right now. And then we can use, when we can use view, when we use view, we can see a 3D representation of the cells that we were working on. And you can play with it and uh, you can check if your segmentation is nice, if there are um, some noise, maybe you can see noise in here. And um, that's it. Um, there are lots of materials for you to like to see what you can do with second image for your own applications. This was a three hour tutorial that I kind of rushed in one hour to show you what, what was here, but you can go to second image tutorials in here and check a tour of second image, check gallery examples and check ITK widgets as well to see what you can do in this nice 3D structure in here. Okay. Um, more than that, there is a version of this tutorial from 2019. Um, that I gave in EuroSciPy, and I think Stefan van der Waal gave somewhere else as well, that has lots of examples and lots of um, exercises for you using a different uh, data set. So you can, um, you can do everything was, that was done in here and check it for yourself using a different data set and having a, uh, a different opinion what's on, on what's what for your own research, okay? So again, thank you, Matt. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Monica. Thank you very much for having me. And I think that's all. And I'm around for questions or everything you want to you wanted to say. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alex. And uh, yeah, really impressive how much you managed to to put in the the one hour. Uh, and we do still have you know roughly five minutes for questions if people want to um, just uh, unmute themselves and ask them. We'll pop them in the chat. Um, and again, this will be, uh, the recording for this will be in the website and uh, all the materials for you to consult at your, at your leisure. But yeah, thanks so much, Alex. And yeah, if people have questions, definitely don't be shy and unmute yourselves or chat them. I can get us started. Um, yeah, just to echo what Monica said, it was a fantastic tutorial. Um, I don't myself work with uh, imaging data, but um, it, it seems like this is a fantastic package for everything you'd imagine doing. And thanks so much for the tutorial. Um, one of the things I was curious about is it seems like, well, maybe I missed this, but there, there was that one cell on the far end of your exa example data set. It looks like it was kind of withering, it looked dead. Um, I'm curious, like if you're doing like a, a, a screen um, that's just based off of survival, um, like maybe you have like a cancer population, you're treating with a drug and you want to call how many live cells versus dead cells. What kind of functions do you recommend using to filter out dead cells um, for this for this type of purpose? I would say um, it depends a lot, Matt. Mm -hmm. um, image processing is very uh, ungrateful in that sense because when you change colors, when you change uh, positions, when you change shapes, things will change drastically. So the idea of this webinar is like showing you how different uh, different tools will operate in the same data set and have very different results. So again, if you change anything, like things will change drastically in image processing. 
So for instance, what which cells you would like to count? Right? I, if I recall correctly, there's a book in image processing called Ross from Ross Image Processing Handbook or something, um, 2011, I guess, the last edition. And um, there is this discussion, where, where will you count your cells? So if mm -hmm. cells are getting on the, uh, on the borders, will you count them? Will you not count them? Because if you're if you're thinking in a in a large space, and if they touch the borders, if you count them here, and if it turns out that you have the uh, the other part of the image, if you count them, will you count them again? You know, it's like, yeah. uh, are you repeating the calculus, or are these cells that different that when you're like uh, doing a threshold, uh, you're losing them? You know. <laughs> Uh, so, oh, I'm losing a lot of cells that I don't want it to, you know. So one of the um, one of the advice, I, uh, like the advice I, I could give, like the best one I could give in that way would be um, like open your code when you're doing research, when you're doing science. It's very important for you to like to describe everything you're doing mm. and uh, showing the code together. It's like, hey, I did this and. Um, let's say, hey, this is very wrong or something like that. People can tell you that this was wrong because you did it that way. Or people can actually check and verify your science and say, oh, okay, uh, Matt was right. Uh, he was doing the right thing in here. <laughs> yeah. That's, so basically it's a very complex question. Um, it just goes to show how little I know of uh, image processing. <laughs> Sorry for the naive question. No, yeah, the, but don't worry at all. It's like um, there are several, several, several uh, tools to solve the same problem, and they work very, very differently according to the images you have. Mm. So you change the light, you have different algorithms. You change the colors, you have different algorithms. You change the angles, you have different algorithms. Mm. Well, good. Good motivation to have such a comprehensive imaging processing package for all this type of stuff. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Next, well, um, yeah, do people have any other questions? Uh, 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 thanks for the amazing tutorial, Alex. I had uh, a question regarding if you have. Uh, perform analysis on fiber-like structures and what would be like some advice or suggestions that you may have like in the image processing of those? Sorry, come again, Christian? Uh, so if you have uh, perform analysis on some uh, structures that look more like fiber-like, like let's say microtubules or um, uh, that they don't have like like a circular chase and more like elongated ones. Fiber-like? You yeah. say, oh man, um, I'm, I'm say I didn't plant you in my, in my, uh, in this today. It's like, I don't know you at all, but I, I, I just published a paper in February, like dealing with this, the, this, this whole problem. So, um, okay. yes, uh, there is a paper on fibers and micro CT using second image and some com uh, computer vision tools. Uh, I, I can I can send it to you to you later. Um, in this case, like if you go to second image page, um, first of all, I have all the code open as I was uh, like walk the walk like that. So I the, all the code is open. You can use it. But at the at the end, for these very specific fibers, I used uh, multi otsu because we had several. Uh, may may I show you? Okay. Um, uh, let me show you. It's like it's better. Sign side data. Okay. Found it. So, all right. Manage preferences. I don't want you in my cookies. Okay, reject non-essential cookies. Okay, so this is the paper, and um, the these are the fibers. 
in in for this paper. Mm. Um, so you have several several fibers in here, Christian. And I used first, I used these um, this pipeline of like pure image processing using um, first like uh, denoising and then. Uh, multi Otsu, so Otsu will separate in two, in two channels. Multi Otsu, in this case, I used four channels. So we have several nice colors in there. And then I said, hey, I want only one of these regions. And then I specified, hey, I want only this part of the image and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, processing. So this can be a way, and then here you see the labels and the, let me show you in a large image, nice and large image. Yeah, this is not large. So yeah, you can see the, uh, the labels in here, like mm -hmm. very well separated uh, since I used Mochiotsu. And I think there is, a, there is some uh, erosion in here as well. But the... Uh, the paper is here, the paper is open, you can check it. Uh, the uh, the code is open, you can check it. You can spin your own case. And I think I think it's a good example of like fibers and so on. Thanks, amazing. Mm -hmm. Awesome, well, thank you so much. And thank you guys for the, for the good questions. I do think we've run out of time. So um, thank you very much again. And uh, uh, hope to see you guys uh, in the fall, but in the meantime, have a great summer. And uh, yeah, that's that's it from us, I believe. Right, Matthew? Yep. Yeah. Thanks so much again, Alex. Yeah. Thank, thank you, you everyone. Guys. Bye. Take care.